completing the square on this guy here. Um, so first, <coughs> what should we do if we're gonna complete the square on it? <coughs> put one, subtract one and put it on the other side. Okay, we like to have a, a blank space here to fill in. Well, we got 45x squared plus 57x. We'll subtract one from both sides. And then a four plus something. We don't know what yet. Now what? Divide 57 by 2 and then square it. I don't want to do that quite yet. Oh, wait. Yeah? You have to make the x squared. You have to make 45x squared x squared. Yes, we want in our next step to have x squared. 1x squared. How do we do that? Divide by 45. Divide everything by 45. Okay, so we get, uh, let's see. If I divide 57 by 45, do they have anything in common? No. 57. Oh, wait, 3? Three? 3? Uh, okay. Yeah, they do. So 3, 57 divided by 3 is what? Uh, 19. 19 fifteenths x. Okay. And on this side, we get 4 over 45. Divide everything by 45. In the next couple of steps here, what we want is to have x plus something squared, which means that the step before that was one factor times itself by two identical factors, <coughs> which when you multiply these factors out, you get this, including this thing. We still haven't found it. And uh, maybe you all know that you're supposed to take 19 fifteenths and divide it by 2, okay, which would be 19 fifteenths, a little more easily multiplied by 1 half. Same thing with dividing by 2. So we get 19 thirtieths. Now, the thing about this expression and this factorization is that right now, they're not equivalent to each other, right? Why are they not equivalent? <coughs> what? Good morning. Due to the Shakespeare play, and I'm supposed to be right, right now. Today is Tuesday, December 16th. It is an A day. Happy birthday to Shay Miller and Kyle Weisberger. Lunch today is... Okay, so the question was, why is this not yet the same as this? Yeah. When you distribute the 1930s to the 1930s, you don't get nothing. Yeah. You get something. And there's nothing here right now. Exactly. Okay, let me say that again. This factor times this factor is something, right? Let's see what it would be. <coughs> By the way, like we do this every time for every completing the square problem. This guy here must always be half of this. These factors have to be identical, and they have to add up to whatever this is. 19 over 15 has to add up to 19 over 15, so it has to be half of 19 over 15. Let's see that happen. Multiply x by x, you get x squared. x by 19 thirtieths, you get 19 thirtieths x. Distribute the 19 thirtieths, you get 19 thirtieths x again. So far, so good. If we were to add the 19 thirtieths x plus the 19 thirtieths x, they have a common denominator of 30. Okay, so you get uh, 38 <coughs> thirtieths x, which simplifies to, simplifies to plus uh, 19 fifteenths x. 
So you have the 1930s plus 1930s come to the 1915s. But there is that last part. That's what we're looking for here when we multiply this number by itself. 1930s times 1930s. What's that? What's nine, so we multiply 1930s by 1930s, we multiply straight across. What's 19 times 19? 361. 361. Over 900. Okay. You got that? What just happened? We just squared it. We just squared to this. Yeah, this, this factor here. We just multiply this times itself, which includes 1930s times itself, which is 1930s squared. All right. So if this is to be equivalent to the step before it, which is also always needs to be the case. Whenever we work with an equation, every step needs to be equivalent to the step above it. So we can get both sides and so on. So we keep, keep everything the same. So on this side, we need to add 361 nine hundredths to both sides. You have to add it to both sides because this is new. This is additional to the original, the original equation. So far we just moved the negative one over here. We divide everything by 45. Then we added this new number. X squared plus 19 fifteenths X plus 361 nine hundredths factors perfectly as a perfect square. So that we can write it this way. Well, we need to add these together, which means we need to find common, common denominator. So we need to multiply, I think we can get 920. <coughs> multiply 45 by 20, and you get 900. Multiply this by 20. 80. So we get 80. <coughs> we don't need to write that down. So we get 80 plus 361, which is? 41. 441 over 900. This is 441 over 900. And now that like this is what we've been shooting for is what we shoot for every time we do completing the square. We have a factor squared equals some number, no matter what that number looks like, good or bad, it's just what it looks like. So what do we do right now? Take the root on both sides. Take the square root on both sides. That's what we've been aiming for. That's what all of our efforts have been for. That's what we've been doing. We've been setting it up so we can take the square root of both sides. 1930 Um <coughs> Remember, we could think of this as 440, the square root of 441 over the square root of 900. We should know what the square root of 900 is because 30. Is there a square root of 441? Yeah. Not a nice one. Not evenly, but there's not a Well, there's always a square root of a number. It might be a decimal. Or or we just get the bottom the part. Oh, wait, no. There is. What's the square root of 441? 21. 21? 21 times 21 is 441. Yes. Well, that's nice. So if the square root of 441 is 21, the square root of 900 is 30, then what do we get here? 21 thirtieths. 7 tenths. 7 tenths. So it simplifies to? Or we should just leave it. 7 tenths. Oh, it. we should. Why? Because we're about to subtract on both yeah. sides, and we're going to have a common denominator. Yeah. OK. Thirtieths. Yeah, I'm kind of missing something over here right now. Positive. Yes, positive or negative. Just take the square root. Whenever I take the square root of my equation, I'm going to include positive and negative. Okay. So that worked out nicely. Like because these happen to have square roots, 441 has a square root of 30, 900 has a square root of 30. These are kind of like the ones we've been doing so far, where those numbers have square roots. It works out nicely that way. It doesn't always. That's what we're going to be talking about today. So. We're almost there. We got x plus 19 over 30 equals 
positive 21 over 30, negative 21 over 30, and we are just about to solve it by doing what? Subtract 1930s from both sides. Subtract 1930s from both sides. That gives us x equals 19, negative 1930s, that I said just subtract from both sides, plus or minus 2130s. How many solutions is this? Two. Two. You take something, you add 2130s, you take something, you subtract 2130s. So let's just take the, the positive for a second, right? add 2130s. What's negative 30s plus 2130s? Negative 1930s plus 2130s. What's that? 40 over 30. 2130s minus 1930s. Oh, mine. Right, negative plus, you know, positive yeah. minus. Yeah. So what is it? 230s. 230s. Or 115th. All right, what if you take negative 1930s minus 2130s? Tyler kind of had it. Negative 1930s minus 2130s, what? Negative 40 30ths. Negative 40 30ths, negative 4 30ths, right? Negative 40 30ths, negative 4 30ths. Now, two classes ago, we had the really nice completing the squares, where like we didn't even wind up with fractions, we wound up with integers. This is an example of something you might have seen last time where you wind up getting fractions, but like actual rational numbers with no square roots in them. You just one fifteenth and negative four thirds. Those are your solutions. Today we'll wind up with square roots in the final answer because it won't work out that the square root of whatever this is is like 20 or 19 or like some nice number. It'll just be the square root of itself. The square root of 8 it doesn't have a square root. It has a decimal square root, but it doesn't have a whole square root. Square root of 13, square root of things that do not have nice square roots. Together, we'll work this one by yourself, then I'll work it with you, and then this one will be all you. Okay? Let's work this one out together. Remember that at some point we're going to want like r, it might be plus or it might be minus, depending on this problem. We want some factor squared, which means we want factor uh, plus something or minus something, <coughs> identical factors. In order to figure that out, we have to do all this work. Well, we want r and r, not anything other than r. One r and one r. So that's the first thing we need to address. How do we get it so that when we factor it, we get one r times one r? Divide. Divide, Divide by three. Divide by three on everything. Okay, so we get r squared minus 8 thirds r minus 3 equals divided by 3 is 0. to put three on the other side. Okay, so that's the, that's what we'll do now. We'll add three to both sides. Plus something, right? Right now it's plus nothing. There's nothing there. But it will, there will have to be something here. We're gonna force it to be one factor times another factor. Okay, and we've added three to both sides, so we get three over there. Okay. <coughs> Now, these two factors, 
as always, they have to be identical. This middle term has to come out to be negative 8 thirds r. And every time for that to work out, this guy here, well, first of all, we know it's going to be a negative and a negative because they're going to add up to be a negative. So only a negative and another negative can add up to be a negative if they're exactly the same. Okay. And if they're exactly the same, they add up to negative 8 thirds. We just said the definition of half of a number. I told you, find two numbers that are identical, that add up to something. I'm just talking about half of that number. So it's half of negative 8 thirds. Negative 4 thirds. Divide this by 2, multiply by 1 half, simplify it. Negative 4 thirds and negative <coughs> 4 thirds. That's half of 8 thirds. Now that we know that these are both negative Four thirds, we can figure out what needs to go here, what we need to add on here. Always, is it always going to be plus something? Yeah. Why is it always going to be plus something, Justin? Because if you square a negative or if you square a positive, it's always right. Positive. When I go to multiply these out, I'm going to multiply this number by this number, which is always going to be positive. Whether it's positive times positive or negative times negative, it will always be positive. So we're going to add something to both sides. What do I get when I multiply negative 4 thirds by negative 4 thirds? <coughs> it must be positive. It's going to be positive. Eight. What? 16 over 9. 16 over 9. 16 over 9. So I just added 16 over 9. So introduce the 16 over 9 so it was not there before. So I'll add 16 over 9 to both sides. All right, so I need a common denominator. Over one, so I'll multiply this by nine, I'll multiply this by nine. So I have 16 ninths plus 27 ninths. Okay. And what's 16 ninths plus 27 ninths? 43 over 9. Great. Well, this is just a factor times itself. A number times itself is just that thing squared. Equals 43 ninths. And this is it. This is the payoff. This is what completing the square is all about. Why are we doing all this work? Because of this step right here. Every completing the square will get to this point and on both sides we'll do what? Take the square root. Every completing the square, this is what you are hoping and wishing for, that you can take the square root. All your hopes have come true, because now we get to take the square root of both sides. We have r minus 4 thirds equals what? Square root of 43 over 3. One other thing. Plus or minus. Plus or minus. Whenever you take the square root, plus or minus. Alright, almost there. Just gotta get r by itself. We're gonna get r by itself by doing what? Add 4 thirds. Add 4 thirds to both sides. r equals 4 thirds. A positive 4 thirds, because we added 4 thirds to both sides. Plus or minus the square root of 43 over 3. We are not surprised to find that they have a common denominator. Okay. If you don't, well, if it were possible to simplify this and you didn't simplify it, it'll just have the same denominator as this side. They have a common denominator, so it was just it would just be four plus or minus the square root of 43. Whatever the square root of 43 is, we would add it, then we would subtract it, and in both cases, we'd be dividing by three. So, right on the, the sheets that I gave you, work this one out yourself. Okay. I'll see how you guys are doing. All right. So, just like before, we'll go ahead and uh, 
I guess just subtract one from both sides. I would think that there'd be either uh, one of two first things you could do, subtract one from both sides, or divide by four on both sides, or do the same, you know, do both at one time, whatever you want. I'll just go ahead and subtract one from both sides. Right, plus something that we'll figure out here in a minute. Negative one plus that same thing that we're about to figure out here in a minute. You're gonna have to add that same thing on both sides. We'll divide by four, okay? x squared minus 2x equals negative 1 fourth. So far so good? Okay. Then we are trying to figure out what will these two identical factors be? It'll be x and x. We're adding to a negative, so it'll be x minus something and x minus something. This, as always, has to be half of that. All right, so we figured that out, x minus 1 times x minus 1. And now, this tells us what this will have to be and what this will have to be. We know how we want it to factor, but it won't factor until we have the correct constant here. Because when we multiply this out, this gets a constant of what? 1. When we multiply it out, we get x squared minus x minus x plus 1. That gives us x squared minus 2x plus 1 plus 1 on both sides because that plus 1 is new. We just introduced it, so we need to add it on both sides. All right, so, well, we'll make this 4 over 4 so that we can combine these two fractions. We get 3 fourths. And that is... That's the dream right there. That we have something squared <coughs> equals some other number. And now we can, what? Take the square root of both sides. That's the whole purpose here. To get x minus 1 equals what? Write this plus or minus. Remember plus or minus. Nice, right? Square root of 3 over square root of 4, which the square root of 4 is 2. Now we need x to be by itself. We'll add one on both sides. Add one on both sides, plus or minus the square root of 3 over 2. We can put these together. Right? This is a fraction. This could be a fraction. As long as we have a common denominator, right? The denominator will be, denominator will be 2. Right? So we'll make it 2 over 2 plus root 3 over 2, or minus root 3 over 2. So either way you go, what you what you do with the positive would be, you would take 2 plus the square root of 3 over their common denominator 2. If you did 2 over 2 minus root 3 over 2, you'd have 2 minus root 3, all divided by 2. Okay. This one, it's all you. Yes? Okay. Let's do this one together and then I can answer that question, I'll bet. Okay, quadratic formula. It's a very nice thing. Really, the quadratic formula is just all of this, right? Notice, if you've done the quadratic formula before, which you have, you should have, if you did the homework that's due today. Does this look like the quadratic formula a little bit? Something plus or minus the square root of something over some number? All right, looks a lot like that. Here is the quadratic formula. x equals negative b plus or minus the square root b squared minus 4ac over 2a. But the first thing that needs to be true, to use this equation, to use this formula, excuse me, this formula, your equation has to start off as what? <coughs> 1x. It doesn't have to start out as 1x. What it needs to start out as is stuff, bx squared zero. plus bx plus c equals 0. 
So we need this side to be zero. It would be easiest to make this side zero. And then it would be nice to write things in order of the powers of x. So I'm going to write 12x squared plus, oh, now we got plus 3x on both sides. So we get plus what? 10x, because they're common like terms here. Minus 5 equals 0. In the Khan Academy examples, these came out nicely. When, the, when you did the square root part, the square root came out as like the square root of 16, the square root of 144, and so on. Now it won't, and it'll just look like this. Okay. All right, so let's plug it all in. How do I know what A is? X squared is A. In front of the X squared, the coefficient of X squared. B is the coefficient of X, C is the constant. Plug all this stuff in. B is 10, so we get negative 10 plus or minus the square root of B squared. B is 10, so 10 squared is 100 minus 4 times A times C all over 2 times A. Negative 10 plus or minus the square root. So I'm just kind of running out of room. I'm just going to do this all at once. Uh, what do we get? 20 times 12. That's 240. It's positive. 240 plus 140 is 340 over 24. Now we have to think can we simplify the square root of 340? <coughs> Here's what I'm saying there, negative 10 plus or minus. Can we write this as the square root of something times the square root of something else? So that like this square root preferably actually has a nice square root. Like is it the square root of nine? Is it nine times something equals 340? Is it 16 times something equals 340? Anybody know? We're not sure? Just break out the old calculus, show how I do it. Uh, usually just go ahead and Break it down as much as possible. Try 16, no, 340, divided by 9, I'm hoping, no, 340, divided by 4. Okay, that's nice, 85. Now, 85 is a smaller number, and I can find its factors more easily, right? Because if I can find another square number that's a factor of 85, I'd like to bring that out as well. Uh, so 85, I don't, I don't think it's going to work out very well. This, it is divisible by 5, what's that term? 17. 5 times 17. Neither 5 nor 17 is going to split into any useful factors. Okay. So we just have 4 times 85. 85 can't be simplified anymore like, so that it's a factor of something that has a square root. So just 4 times the square root of 85 is the best we can do. Right. Get this out of the way. Negative 10 plus or minus 2 root 85 over 24. We can simplify this because these two have a common factor of, and just in the numerator here, what common factor do they have? 2. If I pull out this 2 from inside the square root, or inside the uh, this expression here, I'll get negative 5 plus root 85 over 24. Now the numerator and denominator have a common factor. What common factor do the numerator and denominator have? 2. two. This 2 divided by 24, we can simplify that to 1 and 12. And somewhere I lost my plus minus, there it is. So final answer, negative 5 plus or minus the square root of 85 over 12. Okay. Okay. Get to work on that next one. That one's yours for the moment. Okay. Okay. Uh, so first, we need it to look like ax squared plus bx plus c equals... Zero. So we need to get everything on one side. I guess that was it. <laughs> minus x squared minus x squared gives us 3x squared plus 7x 
plus 7x, well, there's, there's no other x's there, so we just get plus 7x plus 3 equals 0. It's got to look like that before we can ever use the quadratic formula. Quadratic formula, well, let me write it down just so we're clear. Negative b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4ac over 2a. All right. Remember, a is in front of x squared, that's 3. b is in front of x, that's 7. c is the constant. If we follow this formula, we get negative 7 plus or minus the square root of 7 squared, that's 49, minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. Now be careful. I've seen it, it's, it's a funny thing that it happens to lots of people. You start out looking great, and then this line right here it just inexplicably starts to shrink, as if it weren't important that this negative 7 were in the numerator with everything else. It started there, it should end there, it should stay in the numerator of the entire fraction. Okay, So make sure that you keep drawing this line so that the entire numerator is still up there. Any questions so far? Right. Still negative seven out here, plus or minus. Remember what I'm saying here. The whole thing <coughs> in the numerator. Plus or minus the square root of. We got 49 minus 36, which is what? 13. 13. When we do 49 minus 36, we get 14 or 13. Square root of 13. Over two times three is six. If we we're going to simplify this at all, it would first we would first need to be able to. Right, this says the square root of something times the square root of something else. 13 is prime. It's not going to break down at all. So we're done. Be careful that this line has not shrunk and that there's nothing here. This whole thing, this whole thing should be still in the numerator. All that stuff that started in the numerator should still be in the numerator. It should be negative 7 plus or minus root 13 over 6. Plus that fraction. Collect all the things on one side together, then it equals zero. If we follow the quadratic formula. Okay. All right, so as we solve these equations and we take the square roots of both sides, there's sometimes we'll take the square root of both sides, we'll take the square root of a negative number, which in the real numbers is not possible. But if we invent new things called imaginary, numbers, of complex numbers, then we can give it a solution. And over here is kind of showing you why would we would even do that. Why would we invent a whole new set of numbers? Because sometimes when you combine these imaginary numbers together, we wind up getting real numbers back. Okay. So we'll look at that in a second. So the imaginary unit i, like the unit of the real numbers is 1. That's what everything's based on. I start with 1, I add another 1, I get 2. I add that 2 and another 1, I get 3. I take that 3, I divide it by that 2 that I had before, I get 3 halves. That is the basis of all the real numbers, the unit 1. Well, the unit for the imaginary numbers is the solution to this equation. Take the square root of both sides, and x equals plus or minus the imaginary number. So the imaginary number is the square root of negative 1, which is not a real number. You cannot find a number in the real numbers that you multiply by itself and get negative anything. It's positive times positive, it's positive or negative times negative. Um, we can, if we take the square root of a negative something other than 1, we're going to simplify that. Okay. So the square root of negative 4 is the square root of 4 times the square root of a negative 1. Can we agree on that? Because you can multiply square roots together. And under the same square root, we get the product of those two things. What did we call the square root negative 1 just a second ago? We called it i. And what's the square root of 2? Or sorry, the square root of 4. 2. Please excuse the interruption. Please release all high school students. The new gym students, please remain with your class and teacher. Thank you very much. See the idea there? We're going to be a little late. Okay. Now, i is the square root of negative 1. 
if I square i, let's see what that looks like. i squared. That's something times itself, right? That's i times i. Stay with me. That's i times i. That means the square root of negative 1 times the square root of negative 1. If I multiply a square root by itself, I just get whatever's in the square root. So i squared is negative 1. So when we multiply two imaginary numbers together, we actually what get one of getting back into the real numbers. Which is kind of weird if you picture that, but it's like floating cloud of imaginary numbers and when two of them collide in multiplication, they transfer over and they cross dimensions over into the real numbers. It's weird. Okay. Now, if I consider i to the third, i to the third, well that's just i squared times i. Can we agree on that? i squared times i. So just i times i times i is like i to the third. So if I can put two of those together, we get i squared. What's i squared? Negative one times Negative one times i is negative i. Negative one times i, negative i. If I want to think about i to the fourth, well, I can just take an i squared times an i squared. What's i squared? And then what's i squared? Plus negative one times negative one is one. What did I say? On, on the little chart thing up there, it says they have uh, I or four equals I. Uh, that should be one. Yeah. 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 Can you all correct that? One. And this should be I. I'm going to fix that and then pass that over. I to the fourth is two I squares multiplied because it's positive one. Positive one. And i to the fifth, so let's just, i to the fourth times i, that's one times i, that's i, and then it circles back through. Okay. When we multiply these together, uh, sorry, these, when we multiply these together, I'm just gonna foil it, right? Quote unquote. Well, when you do that, you can imagine you're getting an i squared in there somewhere. What's i squared? Negative one. If you wanna change the i squared to negative one and simplify further. All of these, any combination of two complex numbers, like that's a complex number, that's a complex number, that's a complex number. A real number plus a real number times i is a complex number. Anytime you combine them in any way, multiply, divide, subtract, add, you can write it as a complex number. You shouldn't wind up with i squared or i to the third or i to the fifth. Like all of those can be simplified down to either i's, negative ones, right? Negative i's. We're just going to deal with i squared. They should be simplified down to negative one. Okay. Then, when we solve these equations, we're going to wind up getting the square roots of negatives, and we're going to simplify that, just like we did here. Okay. Remember to correct that. i to the fourth is one. i to the fifth is i. 